Good evening, football fans, and welcome to the desert here in Arizona. And in this desert, a footballing oasis that is home to Phoenix Rising FC. And tonight, they will play host to the first place team in the Western Conference, Real Monarchs SLC. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us. Tyler Terrence, joined by none other than Mike Pepper. And Mike will jump right into it. Playoff picture at the moment. Phoenix slowly but surely trying to climb their way up the standings. Multiple games in hand. Monarchs have already clinched their spot in the 2017 postseason. Yeah, and it's really, you see the standings and, and the difference it is, but it was Real, the Monarchs, who early on in the year really jumped out to such a huge lead. They've been coasting because they've been struggling. Phoenix, on the other hand, has been on fire. They've moved from outside the playoff spot into seventh, and as you mentioned, still some games in hand. Phoenix, seven matches unbeaten, and if they're going to make an eight, they're going to have to keep an eye on this man, one of the leading goal scorers in the United Soccer League, Chandler Hoffman. Yeah, Chandler Hoffman sits at fourth in the USL. A couple of goals off the pace set by Dane Kelly and Enzo Martinez, but he's been outstanding for Real Salt Lake, and you can see just in there, just getting in the way, he knows how to put the ball in the net. Him and Sebastian Velasquez have been a dynamic duo in the USL this season so far. And on the other side, a man who hasn't been on the 18-man roster since August the 5th against LA Galaxy 2, none other than Didier Drogba. Yeah, I mean, what else, what else can you say about Didier Drogba? He's just a, the name, just synonymous with just great goal scorers, and he's getting a chance. You pointed out, obviously, it's not in a month has he been back out there, but he's going to be available on off the bench tonight and he'll be a big part for Phoenix if they want to continue that hot run they have. And now we'll take a look at the starting lineups beginning with Mark Briggs. While they already have their playoff spot secure, they're going for it all. They're going for that number one overall seed. They're going for that regular season championship. Probably one of their best lineups you'll look at here tonight. Yeah, I think so. And again, it's one that has been struggling. One coming off a 0-0 draw with Portland, who's down at the bottom. But it's still a lot of good players. Connor Sparrow outstanding in goal as well. This has been a back line that has fluttered over the past couple of games. We'll keep an eye on them as we progress. And on the other side for Patrice Carteron, a lot of speed in this line. Lineup, but they're missing Wright Phillips, Jason Johnson, and Peter Ramich, three normal starters in addition to Drugba, who is coming off the injury and available off the bench. Yeah, that whole schedule of playing all these games coming into play. You've got to get these guys some rest. Sam Hamilton on loan from Colorado as well, getting an opportunity in the lineup tonight. Gladson Awoko making the start as well. He'll be looking to pair up with Chris Cortez up top. Phoenix looking to cushion their playoff position. Real Monarchs inching closer and closer to a regular season championship. We'll have it all when we come back. September long with savings at Pruitt's. We've got the biggest deals on all your favorite looks. Like this Abbey Espresso five-piece counter height dining set, yours for $199. Or this casual three-piece Sonoma Shea sectional, just $599. Visit Pruitt's for the lowest prices and best selection at Alma School and Ray or Thomas Road and 34th Street. Pruitt's, proudly serving the Valley for over 65 years is watching Phoenix Rising FC because international soccer legends Didier Drogba and Sean Wright Phillips are playing together for Phoenix giving this city the high quality soccer fans have been waiting for watch Phoenix Rising FC face Seattle Sounders FC 2 Wednesday September 20th at 7:30 p.m. live on your view Arizona Phoenix Rising FC our city is rising and the world is watching it's all about the food. You really need to have a passion for what you do and a passion for food. The Big Kahuna, it's 12 ounces of ground beef, topped with some cheddar cheese, lettuce, tomato, homemade pickle. I mean, it's just a huge meal. I believe in a scratch kitchen because I'm passionate about the food that we serve our guests, and I love seeing people enjoy the food that we create.
Welcome back, everyone, to Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex, where Phoenix Rising FC is preparing to take on Real Monarchs SLC. And tonight, it's about an unstoppable force taking on an immovable object. Real Monarchs may not lead the lead in chances created, but when they do create chances, they are absolutely lethal with a league-leading 21% conversion rate. Now, for Phoenix Rising FC, there's no team in the league hotter when it comes to defense. In the last five, in the last eight games, they've given up just five goals, and only two of those goals were against a team where they were at full strength and in the run of play. So as long they stay out of card trouble and don't give up fouls near the box they should be in good shape to try to knock off the number one team in the conference back to you guys thanks jose and we are underway from the phoenix rising soccer complex glad to have you with us tyler terrence along with mike pepper and mike so many headlines amongst this game obviously phoenix trying to continue their strong form monarchs trying to get back into form after faltering over the past couple of weeks what are we expecting from this match yeah i, I would expect here as we see this opportunity here it's a, a nice opportunity where teams are going to go ahead and create they want to create the chances should be an open and end because the real salt lake has been one of the top teams scoring goals this year and phoenix has just been doing fantastic as far as continuing that run of success they've had in scoring goals and as we heard from jose earlier this monarchs team not exactly creating all that many opportunities but when they do they are so unbelievably dangerous and so clinical in the box and that seems to be one of the most impressive things about this mark briggs side is that they just simply are unbelievably technical when they get into the area in an area which most players will sometimes snatch at it and not take advantage of the moment yeah that's the key you you've got to test the goalkeeper you got to put it on target more times if you, obviously if you put it wide of the net you're not going to go ahead and create that opportunity if you do you never know what happens and sometimes more more than likely you can find the back of the net this man is going to have to come up huge for phoenix tonight josh cohen who has been absolutely outstanding for patrice carteron as the monarchs back line having issues with this particular ball falls to alessandro Rigi, the canadian already going for go early and Sparrow will be happy to see that one out of bounds, but the Banditos as well as the Phoenix Rising faithful already sensing that their side is going to be electric tonight as they've already created a couple opportunities. Monarchs coming off a couple of tough results, a nil-nil draw at Portland Timbers 2, a team that's really struggled to get not only wins, but just points in general throughout this entire season. It was just a couple weeks ago when they were stuck on four points believe it or not in the month of august and then it was a very very bad result against san antonio fc a game in which they had basically in the palm of their hands they gave up two set piece goals in the last five minutes and saw a one nil lead disintegrate basically into a 2-1 loss and they dropped all three points against san antonio but they were able to clinch a playoff spot thanks to a loss from oklahoma city energy fc they dropped a match two nil to swope park rangers and then that would be good enough for monarchs to clinch their spot in the playoffs and the struggles though continuing as well as they get a look at a free kick and on a dangerous tackle early on and Velasquez goes down in a heap and the referee are immediately having to deal with pleas from the Monarch side for what should probably be a yellow card. We'll take another look at it. Yeah, you see the straight leg coming in and obviously he won the ball but anytime you see that straight leg coming in on a defender or on a uh, attacking player and particularly nowadays they will error in giving the caution or even sometimes a little bit worse our referee in charge of tonight's match is ismir pekmich and he already looks like is reaching for the book and it is going to be a yellow card for gladson awoko so awoko shown mustard here in the fourth minute and the booze raining down here at the phoenix rising soccer complex but you sort of have to agree with the referee despite being the first foul of the game it, it was a very dangerous one at that. Yeah, I, you come in with a straight leg, and that just, it seems to be in particularly straight at it. And so many times, even if you do win the ball, you'll see the pressure, the cleats might come over the top. That's where players get injured. And that's been such an in, uh, such a uh, an increase in what the referees are supposed to do to protect the players. You make sure you call that, and maybe even caution or eject them. So now a very good opportunity from the set piece for Real Monarchs. It's a good curved in ball as Cortez back for defensive responsibilities is able to get there first and Phoenix rising will clear it the other way. Owako already putting pressure on and Phoenix is out the other way. It's a two on oh. Rigi and Owako. Rigi and it's saved by Sparrow. My goodness, would you believe it? 
How do you not play that to your teammate? Was he running offside? Was that the was that the issue? It's two on zero. But a fantastic save by Sparrow, holding his ground. But Glatson Awako, as I'm sure, as a number of Phoenix fans and players have to think that that ball needs to be played. And, and like you said, it, you don't want it to be offside and have the chance completely go by the wayside regardless. But you have to trust, if you're Regi, you have to trust that Awako is going to hold his run. You have to. You have to. This is going to be a, that could well be. Now, it's been wide open. And, and a missed tackle at midfield created that opportunity. But that is... Insane and that's Sparrow. I mean we kind of touched on it a little bit in the beginning But Sparrow has been fantastic coming off the shutout against the Portland Timbers with six saves and obviously a, a game where Salt Lake has been struggling Throughout you get a result that really isn't desirable. Everyone's beating Portland at this point in time And that's part of the struggles they've had but Sparrow has been outstanding not just that game throughout the year considered an early candidate for one of the goalkeepers a year and just at 23 years of age too Connor Sparrow, 23, from the St. Louis area. And we'll take another look at this massive save. Just a bit of miscommunication between the Monarchs back line, and then Rigi just made the wrong decision. Yeah, I mean, your guy is running free, and you don't have a goalkeeper to worry about, and he's behind the ball. I guess it's a situation that you don't necessarily practice all that much, because how often are you going to be on a 2 on 0, yeah. 45 yards in? We'll see whether or not that's rude, but it again in the first five minutes There's going to be opportunities you can guarantee you see how open it's already been and Phoenix has been dangerous at that's one of those things and already probably a Save of the week candidate for Sparrow Rather routine with the foot but holding the ground and not Giving it up. There's not a lot you can do as a goalkeeper in that situation and you kind of hope that the Attacking player plays himself out of it. It's not like Rigi did poorly, did put a shot on goal, but you've got a you've got opportunity that you missed. I think there's no doubt, no no way to not say that. Phoenix looking to operate quickly the other way, but that's over the head of Cortez and all the way back to Sparrow. And back to your point, Mike, you know, you say that there's not much that the goalkeeper can do besides just try to stand his ground, but there were unlimited options for Rigi. Yeah. You can play it over to Iwako. You can maybe fake it to Iwako and try to goal around the goalkeeper. You can take a big touch out to the outside yourself. And it just felt like that that was the least yeah. probability of trying to score a goal during that situation. Taking a shot from there. From 10 yards away with the goalkeeper is about the what you as a goalkeeper you're you're hoping happens. Tvinder was closing down on Awako on the other side, but you know, it, it sounds like maybe for some of the Phoenix fans watching us here that we're harping on it, but you don't see two V zero opportunities. And that's and, a situation and these are professional soccer players. That's a situation you probably should be scoring 99 times out of 100 and you saw the one time. E well, I, I think we're 999 times out of 1,000, <laughs> but you're right. I mean, uh, not to correct you on that, that's just a ridiculous opportunity. Rigi might have another opportunity here, but what a sliding challenge at the back. Superb defensive work from the Monarchs. They've been a little bit rough in the opening moments of this match but that is absolutely outstanding from Emilio Orozco great recovery tackle sometimes inside the box but there was no doubt he got all ball there Monarchs looking for early delivery they are going to win a corner and going down on the far side it looked like was Victor Vasquez going down And we'll take one more look at this defining moment already in the first five minutes of the match. You could see the reaction from Gladson Awako. <laughs> I mean, that was a bit tamed if you ask me. And then here's yeah. a challenge from Orozco on the other end. And he had to get that exactly right. Yeah, and watching too in Awako. I mean, originally you go, well, did he run in front of it? But no, he, he was holding the ground behind the ball, behind the ball. Exactly what you should do. Charlie Adams on top of the corner. Doesn't get past the first defender, but it will be another corner kick for the Western Conference leading side. I think he's thankful that one came back to him. Not a very good ball in the near post. We'll get one more opportunity. Adams, much better ball this time towards the back post. Nodded back, and Josh Cohen able to hang out to it.
waves to the crowd or stretches. Let's call it a wave. <laughs> I like it. It sounds better. There's a nice job of holding on coming out. Not a lot of contact, but certainly you don't want that one to hit the ground. Booming punt the other way from Cohen. Phoenix trying to get on the end of it. Crowd fleeing for a foul from Ismir Pekmanich. They're not going to get one. It'll be a goal kick for Sparrow. Nice, oh. nice breeze here at the stadium tonight. You can see where the flag's not too hot. Low 90s at kickoff. Roscoe looking for an option and Phoenix already you can see pressing a bit higher up the field than normally not allowing this Monarchs team to be able to play out of the back and develop a rhythm early on but here they are but a good step from Mala on that particular occasion Vasquez has to step but he's going to lose it anyway the Monarchs on the move Hoffman unable to get a foot on it already box to box action it's just been a couple of mistakes from either back line that have provided a couple of early opportunities as Waco trying to get on the end of this one and that's the second time we've seen Sparrow about 35 yards off his line yeah playing a serious sweeper keeper in that situation I think when you also watch that here that's the fourth time Phoenix has tried to go up over the top they've been successful with a couple of the runs in this point we'll see whether or not they're going to try and catch Sparrow maybe a little bit further out to have more of that ball drops in the more Sparrow's going to be out of position towards the top of his box should he have to do it but he's been doing a great job outside of his area so far Phoenix coming off of that dramatic 2-1 win over Colorado Springs switchbacks FC that game was at Widener Field over in Colorado Springs where AJ Gray scored what would eventually be named the USL goal of the week a terrific strike to beat Moas Puati in the 86th minute Amadou Dia with the other tally in that match and Phoenix continue their run of just fantastic form they're playing very good football they're getting results when they need to and with all these games in hand you have to think that they're going to be in a very comfortable playoff spot come the time but at the same time Mike we've talked about this time and time again games in hand don't mean anything unless you're getting points yeah and more so really even wins at that point obviously any points you can get but you get those wins that's when you're able to knock off and, and really jump up positions that that you have been able to try to catch up with they certainly have a tall task in front of them with the Western Conference leaders coming into Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex and looking to solidify their spot in the Western Conference standings and even furthermore a regular season championship Louisville City as well as San Antonio FC nipping at their heels Lou City dropping a couple of points after drawing Bethlehem Steel a night ago early ball sent in Vasquez having a tough time dealing with it and it is going to be another corner for the Monarchs Thirteen minutes played. We've had a two on zero oh, be wasted by Phoenix and a couple of good opportunities for the Monarchs and they'll have another set piece opportunity here. Yeah, sometimes you wonder does your head fall a little bit Phoenix still reacting positively still creating those chances. Here in the early going. Adams on the corner again. 23 year old from England. Another poor delivery that doesn't get past the first defender. However, the Monarchs are already to keep it in a dangerous area. Adams struggling to keep it in play. Sends it back in towards the back post. Stewart elevated but wasn't able to get a clean header on it. Lakowiecki. See the shirt tug, but play on there. Good work from the outside back just to keep it. Velasquez was all sorts of moves up his sleeve. Adams again. This is the way the Monarchs love to play, possessing in the opposition's defensive third, just being extremely patient. They are also masters of the counterattack. As we've seen over the past couple of weeks, they are very vulnerable on set pieces. It's what cost them three points against San Antonio FC as 
Foul's going to be called against Phoenix. Sam Hamilton, the culprit on that particular instance. Beasler with the captain's armband, and sometimes you wonder on those type of plays where you let it go, but as possession was still there, but at least try to let Salt Lake reset the plays. That's kind of the intent of what they want. Big ball ahead, but Makaweki unable to get on the end of it. And going back to Nick Beasler, such a common presence in the middle of the park for Mark Briz, the Kansas native. Nick Beasler, obviously, is brother Matt Beasler. Very successful footballer in his own right. Numerous caps for the men's national team, of course. And some sarcastic applause from the Phoenix bench towards the referee Ismir Pekmich as they get a foul called in the middle of the park. Interesting lineup that Patrice Carteron has decided to go with tonight. You mentioned during the pregame, Mike, that it was more so just because they've had so many games packed into a short amount of time, obviously with a lot of games in hand, just mm -hmm. having to get them all in before the end of the season. But maybe some of it is tactical as well with the pace and the athletic ability that the Monarchs bring. They might have felt Phoenix that a bit more pace and a bit more youth in the lineup might be better served against this team. Yeah, you would think uh, Patrice Carteron is just in that we've seen kind of the the philosophy here tonight in particular of sending those balls through and trying to slot through for the run a little bit more so than usual particularly early going they're going to get a free kick here in a very good position now Awako taken down he's already been a menace in these opening moments and again being rewarded for his efforts played for patrice Carteron at tp mazembe Waka also winning the U-20 World Cup with Ghana. And Patrice Carteron bringing him out to Arizona and to be a part of this special, special club. Looks like Alessandro Rigi trotting over to go take it. Very rarely see an empty ball on a free kick this close. Usually you have about three or four players fighting over for it. It's going to be the Canadian Rigi. He's just going to clip it in, hoping for a teammate to run onto it. Orozco gets there first. Dia lining up the shot as it hits Beasler in the back of the head. Awako just going to see it out of bounds, and it will be a corner for Phoenix. Good contact there, and Beasler closing down the ball. Amadou Dia coming off a goal in that match against Colorado Springs this past week. Looking to provide more magic for Phoenix. Rigi on top of the corner. Cortez trying to flick it on. Last touch is going to be off of Monarchs, and yet again, Phoenix will have another corner. Watching the two Salt Lake players go down, like kind of like bowling pins there. They're good defense, though. They ran with their runners. And as the ball does go out for the corner. Looks like the Monarchs are electing to match up with a hybrid of zone and man-to-man. -man. Rigi again, another good delivery as Awako is trying to get there. It'll fall to Rigi once more. A little bit of a hospital ball there for Malo, who somehow is able to come away with it, being hounded by Orozco. And good defensive presence from the Monarchs, and it'll be a goal kick coming for Connor Sparrow. Just getting word now that LA Galaxy 2 have taken a 1-0 lead, and it was Ethan Zubak who scored the fastest goal in USL history under 20 seconds. So everybody can mark down the date, September 16th, the fastest goal in United Soccer League history. And it's just a wonder as to exactly what the opposition were doing for those first 20 seconds. <laughs>
think the fastest ever goal recorded was under 10 seconds. Clever play on the outside. Numbers the other way for Phoenix. Dia was trying to clip it in. We'll have another opportunity here, trying to cut it back. It falls to Hamilton. Wakasa. Monarchs doing their best to push Phoenix into a negative position, and they do well. Stewart finding Dia, trying to slip it through. It's going to fall for Awako. Awako saved by Sparrow, but the flag was up on the near side. So a number of Monarchs players just stopped. That original ball to Dia that went off his back hill. It was the ball to Dia, but Z was in the offside position. Awaku was certainly behind the ball, but that flag came up here on the near side, and as you pointed out, a lot of the shirts in blue stopped, and they'd already stopped at that point in time, but he did see the flag raised at that point. Sort of a cardinal sin of a defender, though, to just stop even before the whistle is blown, because we saw in a recent game earlier today where a player was clearly offside, players did yeah. stop, and the play continued. And the referee does have the option to wave off the lines. The, that is a suggested call. Now, that referee, in almost every instance, maybe 999 times out of 1,000, <laughs> <laughs> will, will go ahead and utilize his assistant referee on the call. But until that whistle blows, you, keep, you play on. You just had to one up me on the 999, didn't you? No, I was just using. I was just using it <laughs> to that point. I mean, you're so right. You never see a two on nil in a game. Easy work for Josh Cohen as Velasquez is unable to find the streaking Chandler Hoffman. I take that back. I did see that when watching my nephew, who's eight years old. I saw a two on uh, in that game, but he's eight. Just because he's eight doesn't mean the other team can't defend. I mean, no, that's true. <laughs> but it's more likely to see in a game such as that. Because I think one of the kids was picking up a, a, a butterfly, I think. And that's why the defender. Well, that's a reasonable excuse. Yeah. The defender started chasing the butterfly. Didn't have to worry about it. Not on a professional going 50 yards one on one or two on none. I don't think Taylor PA was picking up any butterflies on that particular <laughs> occasion. I, I, I would agree with that. Velasquez, big sweeping ball over to the far hand side of Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. It's good work here from the Monarchs trying to slip it through. They were looking for Chandler Hoffman. Phoenix trying to play out of tight quarters. They do just that. Find Sam Hamilton. Dia. Flipping it over the top, but nobody home for Phoenix, and Connor Sparrow will come off his line. 24th minute, Tyler Terrence along with Mike Pepper. Glad to have you with us. Rather slow past 10, 15 minutes, but we got off to a wild start that saw Phoenix squander a 2-on-0, starting about 45 yards away from goal. Alessandro Rigi had Glatz and Awako to his left-hand side, chose to take it himself, and was denied by Connor Sparrow. And as you mentioned earlier, Mike, that can sometimes play psychological games with a player, like thinking, are we going to get a better yeah. chance than that throughout the course of the game? Yeah, you, you have to wonder. It seems that Phoenix has settled down at this point, but, and I don't think it was something that will carry over. They will start to remember that. I mean, at the end of the game, go, oh, we had the chance, but it's not going to be something that's going to affect them throughout. You wonder in that next five, 10 minutes, if it was an issue, it seems to settle down. They've got a couple opportunities again. Roscoe brings it down. He's played a superb match thus far. Had a sliding challenge on Alessandro Rigi just moments after the missed shot. Monarchs on the move again. It's a great delivery behind a couple of Monarchs players as Amadou Dia finding Gladson Awako. Awako looking for the big switch over to Cortez, but racing back for good defensive position was Max Lakoweki. Cortez over the top, looking for Dia. Good defensive presence there from Taylor P.A. And it will be a free kick the other way. Now Dia a little over aggressive there. A little frustrated he wasn't able to get to that. And on the tackle. Troops up. 
Pierre. Pierre, the 26 year old from Salt Lake City. Actually was responsible for the first goal against San Antonio FC. He was credited with the own goal. That eventually led to a San Antonio FC rampant comeback in the last five minutes of that match. Two goals off basically identical set pieces. And while the Monarchs have been superb in almost every facet of the game so far this season, a lot of teams in the Western Conference might be thinking to themselves, they are human after all, and their kryptonite might just be set pieces. Yeah, and particularly it's it's about form as you enter the playoffs. You know, it's still a little ways away and having six games, it's still a fifth of the season for many of these teams in a 32 game season. Obviously Phoenix with the extra game in hand, but into that is a lot that can go on. But when you start to see a team that starts off with 13 wins and 14 games, and now all of a sudden, they're playing the last place team, a Phoenix or a Portland team that only has two wins on the year, and you draw with them, and they were basically outplayed. That does give every opportunity for these teams to get a little bit more confidence when they face you. Phoenix doing just that, oozing with confidence at the moment. It's a great passing football. Rigi tripped up, and it will be a free kick for Phoenix. Great little possession there to watch as the movement off the ball was just so intuitive and so creative and the Monarchs were having a tough time keeping track of all the midfielders. Reggie kind of had it locked up in his feet there. A little fortunate to get a foul. He had a walk who wide open and with a lot of space but it did kind of get stuck underneath his feet and was able to earn the free the fouls to the free kick in a good spot here for the rising. Like it's going to be Rigi to take it again. He seems to be the set piece specialist in this particular starting 11 for Patrice Cartaron. Plenty of big bodies to try to get on the end of it, namely Chris Cortez as well as Amadou Dia. It's about a similar distance to the two free kicks that San Antonio FC were able to score on Real Monarchs with. Let's see how they handle this particular set piece. Rigi. It's a good ball in, but the Monarchs are able to get there first. For the remain in Salt Lake City territory. Awako sends it in, it takes a deflection, and it'll be another Phoenix rising corner. Another set piece. Bib on the ball boy. <laughs> Huge. It's like a little bit like a traffic cone there. It'll be Rigi again, and it will be an outswinger. There's the header. What a save from Sparrow, and it's poked in. And it's Sam Hamilton for Phoenix Rising. The Monarchs again. Weak on set pieces. Phoenix takes an advantage. They take a one goal advantage. Two outstanding saves by Sparrow. He's uh, seeking a little help from the referee, but the third opportunity by Hamilton, no mistake, finds the lower corner. And as you pointed out, set pieces, set pieces, set pieces. And again, Salt Lake just victimized by poor defense on this corner kick. Well, the initial two saves from Sparrow were absolutely spectacular. It was the header from Lambert that was kept out. And then that's about as easy as they'll come for Sam Hamilton. Not really for sure what Sparrow was looking at on that. I mean, he made the great first save. Second one kind of got caught up. There was a Phoenix player that went over him into the net. But that loose ball from two yards out, Hamilton able to kick it in. So the Monarchs continue to struggle from free kicks, from corner kicks alike. And Phoenix with tons of confidence now, maybe looking for two. Rigi off to the races. He's got Cortez on the back post, but his cross is initially blocked by Charlie Adams. And just again, that momentum really picking up steam. Phoenix creating another opportunity. Big throw in from Wakasa.
Cortez using his size to try to bring it down. Acosta with a good touch to find Kevon Lambert. Jamaican goes out wide for Rigi. Now here is the goal scorer, Hamilton. Lambert, big ball over the top for Vasquez. The pullback getting forward. Victor Vasquez sends it in. Diving clearance by the Monarchs. Charlie Adams trying to get rid of it. Doesn't get very far. Now here's Cortez going for goal on the turnaround. Sparrow will see it out of bounds, but Phoenix just oozing with confidence at the moment. Well, I like that opportunity by Cortez, the, the turn. You like to see your striker get those and do quick shots. He wasn't able to get it on target, but certainly will keep the defense on his toes. Well, this really is a tale of two teams who are just trending in the complete opposite direction at the moment. Monarchs haven't picked up a win in their last two games. Tying Portland Timbers two on the road and then losing at home to San Antonio FC and then on the other side for Phoenix seven matches unbeaten and coming off a great 2-1 dramatic win against Colorado Springs. And anybody who follows the USL knew coming into this game that that was the case and that the Monarchs have been vulnerable over the past few weeks and there's no reason why Phoenix can't go out and try to get three points at home. Monarchs trying to answer but that cross is going to go past everybody will be a throw in for Phoenix. Yeah one note on that uh, winless in two games and obviously finding a deficit now that need a couple in order not to if they're able to hold Phoenix out but they haven't gone three consecutive games this season without that and uh, the last occurrence last year last summer July 22nd through August 8th. So so it's been a little while over a year since they've gone three games and not just winless but or, or not just with with uh, They've had draws. They have got a draw in that time. That's amazing. Without a win in three games, I think every team around the league has done that at one point in time this year, except for the Monarchs. Wakasa with some good defending. Phoenix Rising faithful applauding the young defenders' efforts, and then there'll be a goal kick for Josh Cohen. More than half an hour played here at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. Sam Hamilton's goal stands alone at the moment in the 29th minute. As Phoenix will look to better their playoff situation. There's something you don't see every day anymore. Elbow pads for goalkeepers. I thought you were just going to say elbow pads in general. <laughs> well, well, no, no, no. I think you do still do see it, but you don't see the go the goalkeepers tend to go with maybe the the short sleeve or or just the long sleeve without the elbow pad. That's a stitched elbow pad. It's amazing. I don't think I've. Did seen you that. rock the elbow pad back in the day? I, I well, in the 80s, yes. <laughs> uh, got out it of the 90s. In the yeah, 80s. we created it differently. See, we got a short sleeve over there for Sparrow. Well, that's sort of like the offensive lineman approach in football, you know, like they're not going to wear long sleeves and, yeah. you know, negative degrees. That is true. I mean, I, I sit there, I will wear, and I still do play in an old man's league now, but I'll wear the uh, the arm sleeve now, but it doesn't have any pads. I just, I'm kind of amazed by that. Great to see a man like you just keeping up with the times, rocking the arm <laughs> sleeve, staying relevant with fashion. It's encouraging for the rest of us, really. Yeah, look at that. There's the uh, elbow pads, I call. But I wonder if that's by choice or if that was just the kit that came with the goalkeeper uniform that Phoenix Rising issued out or Josh Cohen said I want elbow I, pads on my uniform. You know, I mean, I, I would say that, yeah, they, they, he wants elbow pads. I mean, at, at that point, there's a chance here. Velasca is swinging a miss on that one. A good opportunity. Hands on the head for that man. He's finished much more difficult than that. Phoenix could be looking for two the other way. Dia trying to spring free, but that is a very clean challenge on the outside from Kyle Karinga, even though there are boos raining down here. Beautiful tackle by Karinga. We'll mention that Karinga is on uh, accumulation warning as well, but that was certainly no opportunity. He got all ball. We see some great last ditch tackling from this Monarchs back line, but I'm sure Mark Briggs is wondering why it gets to that point. Again, yeah, through ball again. And that call is going to go against Phoenix. And look at Patrice Carteron on the bottom of your screen, absolutely livid. 
And Amadou Dia just going to smile that one off. Ismir Pekmich, not exactly a popular man in the state of Arizona right now. Velasquez lined it up for a moment, linking up with Hoffman, trying the return pass. That's a combination we've seen time and time again throughout this USL campaign. Mala with a good defensive header. Go all the way back for Mr. Elbow Pad. <laughs> you know what? If you're a goalkeeper and you're wearing it nowadays, you're you're embracing it too. I don't feel like we're embracing. He, he loves it. Well, he's got to love the way his team is playing right now at the moment as well. Seven matches unbeaten, one nil lead over the Western Conference leading Real Monarchs. When you're a two-time Team of the Week as well as a Save of the Week uh, on your resume for the season. You can wear elbow pads or not, whatever you want. <laughs> Keep making the saves. Poor pass there from Lambert, trying to make amends with a crunching tackle, and he does just that. And that's being a foul the other way. And to be completely honest, I probably agree with this Mir Pekmich on that one. Cody Wakasa came in a bit recklessly. And a shield in the body on the appears the leg was being looped around. This is where the referee could sort of dig himself a hole because there were a couple questionable calls beforehand, but this was the yeah. right one. And even though it looked like a 50 50 to the fans there who are, you know, paying money to be there and see their team play, they obviously want Phoenix to do well. It starts to be a, an accumulation effect for them. And that was probably the right call from the head referee. Yeah, and he was quick on that call. Be another set piece for the Monarchs. Adams on top of it. It's a great ball in. It gets all the way through and past the post. It did take a deflection off a of Phoenix player, and it'll be a corner for the Monarchs, but almost disastrous for the home side. Yeah, what a ball played into the area. It's just one of those here that somebody's got to get there, and rather fortunate it didn't deflect in the net after it went off the rising. Charlie Adams could not have thrown that any better. From about 40 yards out, you can't really ask for much more in terms of the delivery. That just needs to be poked home. Any sort of redirection, and Cohen is left helpless. Let's see if Adams can replicate it from the corner. Much better ball in over the head of Orozco. And Phoenix will escape danger for the moment. Cohen, 25 years old, from Mountain View, California. His first season with Phoenix. It's certainly been a very fine start to his Phoenix career. It was with Orange County in 2015, 2016 beforehand, back when they were the Orange County Blues. Velasco is trying to get around Kavon Lambert. Haber. Good ball coming the other way as Haber was trying to elevate and get the header. But Phoenix are doing a good job defensively of making sure that the Monarchs just can't play directly through them, forcing them out wide and just trying to deal with delivery. Sure, a uh, little bit of possession has obviously gone in the way of Phoenix throughout, but the opportunities that Salt Lake has had just really haven't been able to get into the area to create those chances. That last ball in off the free kick is the best opportunity they've had. And there is the man in charge, Patrice Carteron. And it looks like we are going to have a hydro break. So despite the breeze here in the desert, temperatures still up low to mid 90s and with this hydro break, the Phoenix Rising crowd 
applauding their home side's efforts early on. Actually, looks like they might be tending to Coringa as well. It might be a combination of a hydro and injury break yeah. here. I think, I mean, because it was a little late for the hydro break coming into the 40th minute. It just seemed maybe a little unusual time, but Coringa, they are checking out his knee, his right knee, and particularly want to see the stability, obviously, for comparison purposes. The medic will go out there, or, or I guess the orthopedic will trainer maybe just a trainer am Athletic I, am trainer. I, am I, you're, am you're I over? circling it you're <laughs> circling it i'm going so far <laughs> over the top you know what he, he he's the uh, a specialist surgeon i don't know <laughs> i don't know but it, obviously comparing that with karinga that's you don't like to see that but it is good that he's gonna, able to walk off on his own here at this point but it is certainly uncomfortable i don't imagine he's going to be long for this one he looks very frustrated with what is going on right now they're missing a little bit as he's making his way off the field with the medical staff. Met, uh, the MS, I see a medical staff, you're right. And here's a look at the goal. They got things started for Phoenix. Easy work for Sam Hamilton. With a good job from Kavon Lambert using that big 6-4 frame just to create all sorts of problems for the Monarchs defensively on set pieces. And which we have talked about a nauseam at this point is certainly their kryptonite, if anything. As of late, it really has. And it looks like we are going to have an early substitution from the Monarchs as Kyle Karinga is going to be unable to continue. And Regan Dunk is going to come on and replace Karinga. So a big moment here in the 42nd as one of the best defenders for Mark Briggs has an injury that will hinder him for the rest of the match. Regan Dunk coming on here. And two more substitutions remaining for Mark Briggs. I hate to lose it in that first half, but just the way they were checking out the right knee and wanted to check stability, and then you always compare it with the other knee to see whether it is and the decision made to take him off tonight. Rigi gets a couple of defenders to miss. Now Cortez going for goal again, and just wide to the near post, and you have a feeling that that man is just starting to calibrate a little bit. He's had a couple of opportunities right around the area where he's just decided to pull the trigger, and you love to see that from your number nine. Yeah, again, you know, Cortez not wasting any time, gets into the area, and you know you want to take that shot. It was, a, it was very well struck, but just, again, not on target. Again, very good defensive work in the middle of the park from Phoenix, just asking the Monarchs to go out wide, feeling that they have the advantage inside the area in terms of winning aerial battles. Owako. And Zorosko will let that run all the way through. It looks like Phoenix have sort of fallen back into a 4-4-2 and just Allowing Awako as well as Chris Cortez to wreak havoc up top and making it very difficult for the Monarchs to try to distribute yeah. out of the back. Yeah, it has been at this point and just kind of waiting on the pressure, but Monarchs have had trouble stringing together the passes right in that area. And again, they'll turn it over into the midfield to offensive third. Phoenix has looked the most dangerous when they immediately go up the field rather than letting the Monarchs sort of gain defensive shape back. Cortez. Awako asking for it. It goes over the top. The offside flag is up. Mm. Referee is still yet to see it. Now Ismir Pekmich will take a peek over. Certainly close there as Awako was trying to hang out to his run, but he might have been a maybe an arm's length offside. But that's what Phoenix has been doing throughout. Just the ball over the top, letting the run on. And in that case, obviously the offside flag came up, but had it not, Awako may have been very much putting Sparrow under pressure. Sparrow was out, as I mentioned, up at the top of the box, was out of position for what may have occurred, but offside made it all negligible. Getting word now, they're going to have two minutes of stoppage time added on to the 45. Phoenix have to be very happy with the way that the first half has gone. Still maybe an opportunity for Monarch to try to equalize before the half, as nobody is stepping to Orozco. Nutmegs the defender, Awako, for a moment. 
you don't really get unless you mean to do it. I don't think he meant to do it. You can't get credit for nutmeg if you don't mean to do it. You don't think he meant to do it? No, of course not. He, he overplayed it and he just got lucky that Iwako overstepped the ball on that one. All right. The nutmeg professor himself, Mike Pepper, has spoken. <laughs> I've been megged enough times to know what it's meant. As a keeper? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's coming in on the breakaway. You try to make yourself big, you know? You can let your rear end get a little bit larger. Maybe just sink to the ground so it doesn't go all the way through, but, you know, you make the save however you can. But that's where the elbow pads come in. Exactly. Exactly. You don't like to be falling backwards, but when they go for the gap between the legs, you do what you can. Alaska sends it in. Third away by Iwako, but only as far as Haber. Haber going for goal with that left foot, but blocked initially by Dia. As Phoenix continue to bottle up this Monarchs attack, which has looked unstoppable at times this season, but struggling to put it together in the final third tonight and over the past few weeks. Alaska is able to keep it in for a brief moment. Goes out of bounds and now a throw in for Phoenix. And the home side very much okay with heading into the locker room with the current score line. But a lot of Phoenix fans might be thinking that they should be up 2-0. Yeah. Well, they certainly should have had the first. You never know how play changes from that point you get an early goal maybe it doesn't but you're right that opportunity you don't get much more golden than that no one hasn't had all that much work to do early on as he sends a great ball down the line forcing Lakowiecki to get rid of it but that's going to do it for the first half Sam Hamilton's tally in the 29th minute stands to be the difference between the seventh and first place team in the Western Conference, the Monarchs continue to struggle defensively on set pieces. Mike Pepper, your thoughts? Uh, I thought it was a half here that Phoenix really created a lot of opportunities over the top. Unfortunate not to get more, but they did get the goal that went ahead and it's going to be an uphill climb here for Salt Lake in the second half without pressing forward. Hamilton with his first goal of the season. Will it prove to be the game winner? We'll have to play the second half to find out, but for the moment, Phoenix with a 1-0 lead over the Monarchs here at the half. Rigi had an opportunity early in the game, but then it was Hamilton to get the breakthrough. Monarchs and Phoenix rising 1-0 at the half. We'll be back in just a few moments. Large popcorn, couple of drinks. That's 1575. I got this. What, what, what are you doing? Oh, mind tricks. That's cute, buddy but you still have to pay. With Arizona Federal Credit Union, I can pay with my Apple Watch. I don't need cash or card. Stop. Arizona Federal provides mobile solutions when you need them most. You will upgrade your popcorn for a dollar more. I will upgrade my popcorn for a dollar more. Really? No. Arizona Federal, now that's the power of us. The Heineken family passed down a special gift, an original recipe with only three ingredients and all of them natural. I also have a special gift. The ability to cry on demand. It's beautiful. Only three natural ingredients. There's more behind the star. Hey, little man. I'm your new house. Come on in. This is gonna be great. Watch what we can do together. Lights. Ta-da! Locks. Not bad, huh? Oh, and this. I've been saving this for you. You take care of the universe, I'll take care of you. Cox Home Life. Home security and automation. El mundo está atento a Phoenix Rising Football Club. Porque las leyendas internacionales Didier Drogba y Sean Wright Phillips juegan juntos para Phoenix. Y le dan a esta ciudad el fútbol de alta calidad que los fans esperan ver. Ve a Phoenix Rising Football Club enfrentar a Seattle Sounders Football Club 2. Miércoles 20 de septiembre a las 7.30 p.m. En vivo en Your View, Arizona. Phoenix Rising Football Club. Nuestra ciudad se levanta y el mundo está atento. 
Halftime here at the desert at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex as the home side have a one to nil lead over the top dogs in the Western Conference, the Real Monarchs of Salt Lake City, as there are certainly some happy fans here in Phoenix, Arizona. Right now, we'll step aside and we'll take a look at a little package put together by Phoenix Rising FC and their bid to try to get into the MLS. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Phoenix is an optimal choice for uh, MLS expansion. Phoenix on my arm, the project on my arm. The new stadium that they built in, a, I think, 52 days, which I think is an all-time record. Philip. My name is Peter Ramage. Say I'm Mar Bravo. My name is Didier Drogba. Phoenix Rising SC. Phoenix Rising. Ah, Phoenix Rising. Phoenix Rising. Phoenix Rising FSA. Phoenix Rising FC. very independent until I could take care of myself. I fell and I had to have Meals on Wheels. After my stroke, when Meals on Wheels started, I was on the other end of the stick, so to speak. Meals on Wheels coming to my door as someone who's housebound, having someone check on me, assures me that I'm not forgotten. Meals on Wheels has given me a mode of freedom that I wouldn't have otherwise. We are the clients. We are the clients. We are the clients of Meals on Wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're going to take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. the stakes. Expectations are high. Our biggest season yet will break records with elite players and future stars. Innovative technology and new homes. We're growing the game in our communities and across the nation. Are you ready? Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. 
Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. At work or at play, you're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Oh, hey. She's cute. Nice going, man. Things are going great for you. You've earned a night out. Good drinks, good friends. Yeah, we can go ahead and call this a good night. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Not smart. Yeah, I saw that coming. Say goodbye to her. Ouch, that'll hurt your bank account. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. I hope you like eating frozen dinners alone. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Halftime here at the Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. Sam Hamilton's goal right now in the 29th minute. His first of this season, the difference maker between these two great storied clubs. And we will take a look at some of the best moments from the first half. Tyler Terrence along with Mike Pepper. And right off the bat, Phoenix were peppering the opposition. Yeah, and they just every opportunity. They, they didn't really play around with the ball much. They sent it up the field. They were always attacking, whether it be balls over the top or whatever, and including this opportunity that we've looked at ad nauseum and still don't understand how they didn't score. And Rigi would elect to go for it himself. And credit to Sparrow, he does make a great save. He stayed large, but look at Gladson Awako. You have to imagine Rigi's thinking that he may be offside, but Awako livid after the play, wanting the ball, and you can understand why. Phoenix would have that chance go by the wayside. This would be a nice little save that Josh Cohen would make, but Phoenix would have their opportunities further down the line. But how about that sliding challenge from Orozco? Yeah, and they were constantly testing Salt Lake over the top, sending the ball through. And in this case, it was just a great recovery tackle. Amelia Orozco was some great last ditch defending, and they would need some more of it as Phoenix would continue to knock on the door. But another look at Josh Cohen's diving save right there as he wouldn't have all that much to deal with You'd only have to make one save in the first half. Needed those all pub hats there. And then this was the moment that would change everything. Kavon Lambert saved by Sparrow and then just tucked away by Sam Hamilton. Yeah, Hamilton in the right place at the right time. As you mentioned, Lambert won that first header and that's all it was. There's no one around him and that puts the ball into a dangerous spot, including the opportunity by Wakasa to get in, but it was Hamilton who was able to give the one nothing lead. Kavon Lambert completely unmarked, and another man who was unmarked is Chris Cortez in the box. He had a couple of good looks on frame, but Alessandro Rigi was very active in the first 45 minutes. Yeah, he was, and Cortez, again, you like to see your striker get the shot off. You can see Sparrow was letting his team know you got to close him down. And let's take a look at the stats from the first 45 minutes. I mean, if this isn't a telltale sign of how this game is going, I don't know what is. Only 31% possession for Phoenix, but they have four shots on target and nine in general. Yeah. And then on the other side for the Monarchs, they haven't challenged Josh Cohen once besides that one cross that he had to handle, and they've had almost 70% of possession. Yeah, you look at it, just the one shot, but then possession was basically it. But this is exactly what Phoenix is doing. They get the ball and they play it over the top. They'll play it forward, creating the opportunities. Not worried if they lose possession or not. Salt Lake may get it back at the back and then gradually work their way up again, get it to midfield, lose it, then hey, we'll test them over the top again. And that's really the story of it, but Phoenix has been the far more dangerous team in the offensive third. Well, Patrice Carteron laid out a game plan for his team, and they have executed it brilliant up until this point. A quick stop at the Snack Shack, and then we'll be back for second half. I'm all about the fish, all about the rice. I think I'm inspired mostly by the discipline behind sushi, the hand-eye coordination, the knife skills. The knife makes a difference based on the steel and the person who made it, and more importantly, the person who uses it and takes care of it. I think there's a certain amount of elegance and simplicity, and I think sushi is in its core simple. Celebrate Labor Day all September long with Savings at Pruitt's. We've got the biggest deals on all your favorite looks. 
like this Abbey Espresso five-piece counter height dining set, yours for $199. Or this casual three-piece Sonoma Shea sectional, just $599. Visit Pruitt's for the lowest prices and best selection at Alma School and Ray or Thomas Road and 34th Street. Pruitt's, proudly serving the Valley for over 65 years is watching Phoenix Rising FC because international soccer legends Didier Drogba and Sean Wright Phillips are playing together for Phoenix, giving this city the high quality soccer fans have been waiting for. Watch Phoenix Rising FC face Seattle Sounders FC2 Wednesday, September 20th at 7.30 p.m. live on Your View Arizona. Phoenix Rising FC, our city is rising and the world is watching. Almost ready for the start of the second half here in Phoenix, Arizona, as the Banditos, as well as the rest of the Phoenix Rising faithful, trying to urge their team on to what be, would be a massive three points against the league leading Real Monarchs. And right now, we'll take a look at the playoff picture. And Phoenix, with three points tonight, could possibly be level with Tulsa in fifth place. And this has sort of been the buildup for Phoenix. There's been a lot of talk around them about potentially getting a home playoff spot, and they're really taking advantage of all these games at hand. Yeah, they, they are. I mean, if you don't win them, you don't, but uh, you, you can't go on. You're looking at the top of that, Real Monarchs really struggling. You see San Antonio. Reno lost tonight, so that was a big thing. But if you're looking at Phoenix, you know, obviously they've moved themselves into the playoff position, but you'd like to be into the top four so you can get a chance to host that. What seemed insurmountable with the win tonight all of a sudden you're just five points behind Swope Park still yet another game in hand so you have that opportunity that you could be within those two points and who knows how it goes now this is the last game of this four game homestand so it's going to be critical that Phoenix hangs on to this then goes up to the northwest and as you see none of those teams from the northwest are in that top so it is not the worst trip in the world when you look at Vancouver Seattle and Portland so an opportunity to gain even more points even on the road plenty of opportunity and opportunity is where we will stop with them and then a race for the regular season championship obviously Rihanna Monarchs have been fluttering Louisville dropped points San Antonio hasn't been in spectacular form so at this point it's wide open Charlotte Independent somebody who's not featured on the screen they actually drew earlier today against Ottawa as well so it's wide open right now yeah I think the key part looking at that is look at that last line you look at the form that these teams are in and while Real still has a little bit of a cushion a loss tonight is pretty much going to eliminate every bit of that cushion and Louisville and San Antonio will have a chance to grab a little bit closer to Real Salt Lake well, the Monarchs do have an opportunity here to try to get back into this and find their form before the postseason begins. The last thing that Mark Briggs or anybody around the Salt Lake City area would want is a team that is faltering heading into the postseason. Ismir Pekmich says, we're ready. We hope you are as well. Should be a fantastic second 45 minutes. Again, I'm Tyler Terrence. He's Mike Pipper. Mike Pepper, excuse me. You're not Mike Pepper, are you? No, Pipper. I was pipping in the uh, in the play, but that was about it. Are you just trying to make me feel better, or were you actually pipping? <laughs> well, I was trying to make you feel better. <laughs> you, you didn't have to it ask. Worked. You could have just felt it better. <laughs> <laughs> Monarchs. Trying to get into the area. It's a dangerous cross cleared away initially. And Iwako coming all the way back and playing Victor Vasquez along the line. I think I blew it anyway. It's a musical, isn't it? Is it a play? Yeah. Musical play. <laughs> we'll move it on. Orthopedic, medical staff, they're all the same. <laughs> tomato, tomato. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there is a soccer game going on, though, by the way. There is. An exciting one at that, too. I like the way Phoenix... You know, a lot of times you'd like to see possession to make the team work, but when what's working is and you see the balls over the top, you can't say the opportunities haven't gone for Phoenix's way. And as you pointed out, should probably be two to nothing here after the first 45. Haber trying to squeeze his way through. Hamilton inadvertently gets ahead to the rather that was Cody Wakasa. And it will be a free kick coming out the other end. 
Sam Hamilton scoring his first goal of the season. Certainly an easy one at that. Sparrow did make the original save off the Kavan Lambert header and a second save off Wakasa, who was trying to put it in. And then Hamilton literally on the doorstep of the Monarchs goal and putting away his first tally for this season. And it could prove to be a vital one. You know, whether it's two yards uh, in front of the net with a goalkeeper laying down on his back or a 35 yard laser, it doesn't matter. It goes down as a goal in the, in the staff book. So eventually he'll be telling his kids and everything. Yeah, it was a. Uh, midfield laser that uh, <laughs> found the top 90. Lambert and Rigi playing a little one two game of their own. But that pass just out of the reach of Dia. Almost a poor turnover there as Velasco Sharon would want to have that one back. Stewart. He touched from Owako. But Dia unable to handle it. And we do have a player down on the far side of the Phoenix Rising soccer complex as Might Dunk awaits to throw it in. Yeah, it is Chris Cortez. Kind of the ribs. Stomach. Looks like he actually might be holding his right hand. True, too. I'm very uncomfortable with that hand. And a pensive Patrice Carteron. Debating whether or not he may have to make an early substitution here. Just a couple minutes into the second half as the athletic trainer tends to Chris Cortez. You wonder if it is a hand injury, if he'll be able to continue. We'll take another look. He got stepped on. That is certainly has to hurt. So Emilio Orozco, one of the bigger feet that's probably going to step on his hand. And the athletic trainer waving off Patrice Carteron, and hopefully Cortez will be able to continue for the rest of the night as he shakes that one off. Cortez, 29 years old, originally from California. In his second season with Phoenix. Was with Orange County. And we will restart with the Monarchs throwing. Cortez back out onto the field. Good step from Kavan Lambert. Numbers the other way for Phoenix. Cortez around Lakaweki. Still Cortez trying to find Owako, but it's cleared away by PA. Hamilton has his pass broken up. Velasquez on the move now. Velasquez sending it through, looking for Hoffman. But good defensive track back there from Jordan Stewart. And danger averted for the moment. However, it will be a corner for the team out of Salt Lake City. Yeah, Salt Lake City give them a taste of their own medicine gun on the counter attack over the top. But it was a good recovery by Phoenix to thwart the opportunity from going on target. That's what this Phoenix back line, this particular back line, brings to the table is a lot of speed between Jordan Stewart and Duigi Mala. They're going to be able to keep up with the likes of Chandler Hoffman as well as Sebastian Velasquez. Charlie Adam on top of the corner yet again. Adams towards the back post. Here's another early delivery. A lot of numbers waiting in the box for Real Monarchs. And the foul is going to be called against Habert, or rather, Taylor P.A., and it'll come out the other end. Don't always understand the aggressiveness like that. You're six yards away from your opponent's goal. The ball is loose. The defender's looking for a reason to get it out. You can tell he's like, I don't really want to just send it out. And you just run into his back and give him an easy out. It's, that's the worst foul other than a giving up a penalty that you can concede in a game here. That's just that's just inexcusable really. Good flick on header from Cortez. Rigi the other way. Still Rigi. Rigi going for goal and that is a superb block from Lakaweki. Rigi has had some awesome opportunities to get a tally of his own but been denied by the likes of Sparrow as well as the Monarchs back line.
Adams with the big switch. And that's well over the head of Andrew Brody. I think maybe he thought Shaquille O'Neal was out there, and that still may have been too tall for Shaq. I don't see Shaq making a run down the sideline, though. I don't see Shaq making a run anyway. <laughs> to the refrigerator, maybe. Maybe. And to jump at an opportunity to hate on Charles Barkley. <laughs> True. We'll see that crew back in and, action sometime soon, right? And how NBA dare, season. Yeah, and how dare he? Uh, the <laughs> Phoenix Sun, Charles That's Barkley. Right. Ball sent across. Vasquez able to get there. Cortez holding it up for Phoenix. And a good ball the other way for Rigi. And look at all that space for the Canadian to run into. Rigi. Awako checking in. He was looking for Cortez. Probably not the best product to get from that ball that was originally sent to him. But a good sliding challenge from Cortez to win the ball back. Yeah, he's running away from Ned. Forced him to slow down and wait for help. But probably if you're going to wait for that, you probably send in a better ball. Awako working on Orozco. Rigi into space for Kavon Lambert. Jamaican with a heavy second touch and committing the foul afterwards to boot. That might actually be a caution here at this point. It's Dia, isn't it? Yeah, he's it is Dia and Esmir Pekmich. And his, he's losing patience. Wanting him to come over, and now he's receiving a yellow card. I, I, don't know. I wonder if that was what was going to happen if he had gone to him the first time he beckoned for him. I, it didn't look like it originally. I thought yes, but after the second whistle, he still hadn't been going to that indication, but he's running away. It was an obvious one. It should have probably been a yellow card to begin with. The ball was put down to get in play, and you, you kick the ball away from the guy's hand, so it probably should have been, but it was an easy decision for for the referee to brandish the card once he basically ignored him. So Diaz shown mustard here in the 54th minute and time and time again, Mike, we see, you know, nonsensical yellow cards that might seem harmless, but the next dirty challenge that he goes into, he's sent off and then he completely yeah. blows up this entire thing for Phoenix and it gives Patrice Carteron more reason to take you off. It does. And uh, when you uh, continue looking at those are opportunities that go in. It changes the game. You cannot be as aggressive. If you are, you just even a careless thing. You know, the hand goes out if you're 50 50 and it appears you're thwarting an attack, then uh, you, you will get that card. Awako on the move. Taken down from behind, but within the laws of the game, apparently. Orozco with good delivery. Alaska is trying to get around Chris Cortez almost managed to get it out of the long reach of the California man as Lambert sends this all the way over the top for Rigi. Rigi gets on the outside of Andrew Brody. Into space. Wakasa trying to send it across. Last touch off of the Monarchs and it'll be a corner for Phoenix well earned. A good counter attack and the ball came in. You, you see the defender maybe a a little reckless going into the box, but he was at least able to earn the corner kick. And it looks like we're going to have another substitution for the Monarchs. It appears that Daniel Cruz is getting ready to come in. But first, the Phoenix corner, Alessandro Rigi. Cortez looking for it. A couple bodies hit the deck. Awako bringing it down beautifully. Sheds off the defender. Awako towards the back post and sparrows off of his line. Monarchs off to the races the other way. Good ball into the middle of the park. And that ball from Andrew Brody goes all the way out of bounds and a wasted counterattack and the frustration starting to mount for the first place Monarchs. Yeah, it was a bad ball. Good counterattack and Brody just played it behind his teammate. And we'll see that substitution now. And it is going to be Daniel Cruz coming on and it appears that he is going to replace Andrew Brody. Maybe they wish they subbed before the corner kick. 
So Daniel Cruz will make his way on here in the 57th minute as Brody continues to waltz off the field, wasting his own time as his team currently trails one to nil. And Daniel Cruz coming on to, your, to the scene here in the 57th minute. Cortez holding things up nicely. But the ball did go out of bounds. So already two substitutions used for Mark Briggs. Had to make the early sub for Kyle Karinga, who sustained a knee injury midway through the first half. His replacement dunk brings it down beautifully, but Daniel Cruz, maybe a little bit cold coming off the bench, unable to get a clean foot to it. Tough challenge there from Regan Dunk, and Mark Briggs and his staff aren't exactly happy with the call from Ismir Pekmich as Chris Cortez goes down for the second time tonight. Yeah, first glance, I didn't think that was a foul against the Monarchs, but it's not the first time I've disagreed with the referee. Almost an hour played here in Phoenix. Sam Hamilton's first goal of the season. Difference between the first and seventh place team in the Western Conference at the moment. That header falls right to Gladson Awoko. Awako cuts it back. Dia trying to squeeze through two defenders, almost did. And still able to prevent the clearance. And it just looks right now that Phoenix simply want it more than the Monarchs. Yeah, they have. Uh... I think it just goes to show the form that both these teams have been in as you mentioned seven games unbeaten for for the rising and the struggles at Salt Lake City again their struggles are what many of the teams towards the bottom of the table would still love to have but it's a team that's trying to hang on to first place and they're not playing like a first place team particularly as of late uh, it's funny to say here. They are staring at their third winless game in a row, a win and a loss, or a, tie, a, a loss and a tie. But they haven't done that in over a year. Cortez, 1v1 with P.A. Cortez going for goal. And it's over the bar, but he had Taylor P.A. guessing every which way. And Phoenix continue their lightning quick counterattack abilities. And all it is, Mike, is just one or two passes in the middle of the park, and then it goes up the field, yeah. either finding Iwaka or Cortez. Yeah, I mean, on those halftime stats we saw, I mean, the Monarchs basically with 70% possession throughout this. But possession doesn't mean anything. This is this is possession right now for Salt Lake. And where are they? They're not going one across. Phoenix gets the ball. They attack. They'll slot the ball through. A lot of times it's turned over to that case. But when it does go through, it creates opportunities. Good step from Lambert as Dia trying to keep it in play. Will be a Monarchs throw in as Dia and Dunk exchange shoves. Another careless turnover in the middle of the park as Waco is brought down. A lot of things of this Monarchs team that we've seen in the past few weeks and particularly tonight here for the first hour is just careless uncharacteristic mistakes in the middle of the field. Yeah and it's the turnover they, that they had at least into the opportunity so they have turned it over a couple times in that midfield and Phoenix is really at least sending the ball forward and making them work a little harder. Velasquez can't keep that in play and see Mark Briggs with the clap of the hands his frustration starting to become more and more visible. Jordan Stewart just sends it the other way via route one as Owako able to want to throw it. Yeah, 
Hamilton as his pass cut out by Beasler in the middle of the park. Velasquez. Lambert with a good challenge. Able to win the ball back and shield off Lakowiecki. Lambert on the move. Cortez. Still Cortez. And again, isn't able to exactly challenge Sparrow. And while it was good to see from Cortez that he's continuing to pull the trigger in dangerous areas, he hasn't hit the frame yet this match. Yeah, and that's true. Four times and it's not. And when you get the forward, as you mentioned, Lambert, and you get the ball, you're creating those plays and you continue the run. You would at least like to see a ball try to be slotted through when you make that effort from midfield. Cortez's last goal coming against Sacramento a few weeks ago, a 3-1 defeat of the Republic. Jason Johnson and Pete Ramage also involved in the goal scoring on that particular evening. Vasquez taken down, and it will be a free kick the other way, and it's really just been good ma game management from Phoenix. They got their goal, and while they're not sitting back, they are having more numbers than not sit behind the ball, and they're just looking to counter and create problems on the other end. Yeah, and, and that's it. They get the ball, they look forward. They make a run. They get the ball, the forwards continue on, the midfielders in Owako and in Lambert, they'll continue to go, and they'll try to see what they can get. Josh Cohen already getting scolded at by Ismir Pekmich for time wasting. Only in the 64th minute. But expect to see plenty more of that if the scoreline remains the same. Cortez trying to bring it down. It's a poor clearance from Adams. Hamilton brings it down, but he's dispossessed. Lakowiecki. Hamilton wins it back in the middle of the park. Rigi, maybe a bit too cute there. He turns it over, and now the Monarchs are on the move. Clever work on the outside, as it was Daniel Haber trying to spring himself free. Vasquez. Bandito's certainly loving life at the moment. Seven matches unbeaten, 1-0 lead over the best team in the Western Conference. One of the first real times that we've seen Phoenix in clear possession and using Josh Cohen as an outlet. Maybe that's why, he'll turn it over in midfield. Although, not a lot you can do if you're Cohen under pressure, you just send it up midfield. Phoenix asking for a flag, but the referee says play on. Sam Hamilton, the goal scorer on the evening. And White Farigi. Cortez. The Ghanaian Awako again. Stewart caught a little bit. Has to go all the way back to Cohen again. Cortez does really well. Awako, big touch into space, but it is going to be a handball. Even though Phoenix did look a little bit troubled on that particular possession, all it was was a long ball. Cortez mm -hmm. standing at about 6'4", 6'5". All he has to do is win a header, and Phoenix are in business the other way. Yeah, it's, it's been kind of the story here, whether it's not necessarily slotting him, but a walk who or someone coming through. Ball goes out wide. The cross, finding the feet. And there's a block from Mr. Va Victor Vasquez, excuse me. And that was... Appeared to be Daniel Cruz on the back post. And you know, they always say a 2 0 lead is the most dangerous one, and 
any of these sports I disagree I say it's a one nothing lead or two one lead because one mistake and you've lost that lead you obviously the reasons they say momentum goes the other way but this has been controlled by Phoenix and Salt Lake almost just got an opportunity right there Adams good ball in Stewart is asking for a foul but it's just going to be another corner except on the other side Probably the best ball we've seen from the corner from Charlie Adams tonight. That was a strand, strong ball, just about five, six yards out. And good defense there by Stewart. The Adams once more. Into the 68th minute now. Gets all the way towards the back post. Cruz again. Bending it in behind the defense. Mikasa able to win the initial header. Adams back into the box. Orozco couldn't get to it, but Cruz will be able to keep it in play. Ping-ponging on the Phoenix Rising defensive third. Haber finding Velasquez, lining up the shot. And that's into the support group, La Furia Roja. Fans want a chance to win a Phoenix Rising FC player head cutout and be chosen as the Risa smile of the game at the club's next home match. Just look for staff members with the large player head cutouts in the Phoenix Rising soccer complex and get your picture taken. Risa's Dental, their focus is providing quality and affordable health dental care and braces for you and your family. To schedule an appointment, head to Risa'sDental.com. Waco taken down, and it will be a free kick for Phoenix. And it looks like we are going to have a substitution for Patrice Carteron, as it appears that Jason Johnson is getting ready to come in, and he is going to replace Chris Cortez when the moment arrives, but it appears that Patrice is going to wait a moment to use that substitution and give the big Chris Cortez an opportunity to get a header on this free kick. They use the size while he's in there right now. Certainly a savvy move from the manager. Let's see if it pays off. Rigi. Great man. The flick on header. Cleared away by PA. All it needed was a flick on in the right direction. It appeared that it was Wakasa who got there first. Let's take another look. Yeah, someone's not running with him, but it was a good job by PA to clear that one out of the front of the net. It was Cody Wakasa. Spectacular ball in from Alessandro Rigi. Maybe just getting a little coach in from the legend Didier Drogba right on the corner. Rigi. Wakasa again can't get there. Sam Hamilton sprinting after the ball. And that will be the sub now. And Chris Cortez, see on the top of your screen, is going to make his way off. And the Jamaican Jason Johnson, who has been in superb form as of late, is going to come on and replace Chris Cortez, who put in a very solid shift tonight. Yeah, a lot of opportunities there for Cortez, and he was a good target man for a while. And you do like to see your striker get those shots, but unfortunately none of them on target tonight. Cortez getting a well-deserved round of applause from the Phoenix Rising faithful as Jason Johnson comes onto the scene here in the 71st. Great effort from Chris Cortez, and Perhaps Jason Johnson can provide the insurance goal that Phoenix have been looking for. Johnson's last goal coming against Seattle Sounders 2. Just a couple weeks ago, and he put one in in that game against Sacramento. And the question remains, will we see a Didier Drogba appearance tonight? Johnson brings it down. Mawako 
Now wide for Rigi. 1v1 with Lakaweki. Goes for the early delivery. Cleared away by PA. And it will be a throw in. Well, it might be important as well for Phoenix to get Didier Drogba on, who is sitting on yellow card accumulation, perhaps, if one more yellow card. There is an opportunity in the USL to get one of those rescinded if you go five games participating in. And if you even if you come in for five minutes or so and don't receive that yellow card, you'll and you do that five games, you'll be able to take one of those off the record. Or he could get one rescinded for good behavior. That's the exactly if you the good behavior on those games. Johnson trying to turn. Rigi's there to put in the challenge and he wins it back. Early delivery, Johnson, and he tucks it away. His first touch of the match is a golden one. It's a massive goal for Phoenix, and they now have a 2 0 lead over the Western Conference leading Real Monarchs. Now how about that? One touch, one goal. What a finish by Johnson, but what a fantastic ball sent in. I think that wasn't for sure who was it had sent it in, but it was a beautiful ball. Wakasa. It was Cody Wakasa, who was basically stride for stride with the defender, just sticks out a foot and able to put it on a silver platter for the Jamaican Jason Johnson. And he does what JJ does best, tucks it away in emphatic fashion. And the celebration to boot. Phoenix are firing on all cylinders at the moment. And the Monarchs have been left helpless. You can see there Johnson his eighth goal of the season. The smoke grenades are out here at the Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. They can start to smell blood in the water and a huge three points coming their way. Yeah, I don't think we've seen anything right now. There's still 16 minutes left in this one, but the Monarchs have really struggled and now we got a little arguing, pushing and shoving or at least disagreements going on in this one. Daniel Haber in the mix of it. Claiming that Phoenix are time wasting, but the way that the Monarchs have been playing tonight, time isn't necessarily their biggest issue right now. They've struggled with set pieces. They struggled with delivery coming from out wide. And a team that looked basically unbeatable a few weeks ago looks very vulnerable. How about a masterful managing performance tonight from Patrice Carteron? He put out a lineup that was missing the likes of Pete Ramage, Sean Wright Phillips, Jason Johnson in the starting 11, but laid out a game plan for his team, and they have really executed it perfectly, and he's brought on substitutes that have really just worn and torn on this Monarchs defense. Yeah, they've, they've had every answer to it. They'll allow the Monarchs to just go ahead and continue to play with it here, but Anytime otherwise the pressure goes on and then send the ball over the top and test that back line. When we were talking about it, you were talking about particularly at the beginning that has struggled it so much so as of late. Still time for the Monarchs, but to, to potentially get back into it, but they need that first goal. Velasquez. Some fakes and Jimmy sends it across. Phoenix almost had their advantage cut in half. A great challenge in the end from Jordan Stewart, and it appears it is going to be a goal kick. Take another look at this sensational move from Velasquez. Yeah, absolutely. Kept two players going in, and that one, Hoffman on the near post, just got underneath it and needs to put that one down as well. Here's a team that is second in the league in goals scored, and they really haven't given an opportunity to test Cohen yet. That was their best chance of the night. Cohen pushing his team forward as well as wasting a few more seconds. Have to imagine that he might see a card tonight for time wasting. Yeah, he's already got a word to him, and that one seemed a little excessive as well. So with still 15 minutes left here, probably 
in the cards, no pun intended. Or maybe it was intended. It was definitely intended. <laughs> I said, did I say no pun intended too fast? Beasler along for Haber and another great challenge from Jordan Stewart. Well, a little life seen by Salt Lake, though, in the last couple of minutes. They've got opportunities into the box, so maybe we're a little premature in talking about the trouble they're in, but they certainly have to strike soon. A little more than 15 minutes remaining plus stoppage time for Monarchs to try to get back into it. Charlie Adams on the corner yet again. All the way towards the back post, Orozco can't get the header right. And I have to wonder whether or not that's a design set piece because it seems like every corner from Charlie Adams has been sent towards the back post. He's take another look at that great sliding challenge from Jordan Stewart. Well, certainly you do send a lot to the back post, but I wouldn't think it was intended for maybe your smallest man on the field to send it back across. Just so happy he got his head on it, but couldn't get it in front of the net. It's a foul on Amadou Dia. Giving Regan Dunk a little shove in the back. And it really just comes down to game management right now for Phoenix. Two goal lead. A little less than 15 minutes remaining. And they really have looked like the more efficient and more organized team from the first whistle. Vasquez is so unbelievably shifty, just making defenders guess every which way. Mikasa with a nice touch. Rigi trying to clear it away, but Orozco steps forward. Taylor P.A. Look for Velasquez again. Lambert with the header. Dia can't bring it down. And now the Monarchs with some sustained pressure here. Phoenix having a tough time getting out of their own end. Lakowiecki. That pass goes out of bounds. And that's sort of been the story of the Monarchs' night is a lot of possession a lot of meaningless possession that doesn't really amount to much yeah you get into the final third and you struggle with that connective pass and I like said we did see a little life there with a couple of opportunities into the box but it's like Phoenix is right of that ship for now Johnson is away the flag will stay down how about that 1v1 defending from Orozco Velasquez draws the foul Wako trying to hold him up Appears that Mark Briggs is going to make his final substitution of the night as it'll be Diego Calvo to come on And Charlie Adams will come off next opportunity Hoffman Good delivery and he's met by Luigi Mala. Long ball sent ahead. Johnson trying to get it quickly to Rigi. It needed to be inch perfect. Wakasa. Luigi with plenty of space to turn. Monarchs not electing to step to him. Dia trying to turn the corner. Phoenix bench asking for a foul, but probably fair defending from Regan Dunk. Now I'm going to do Dia and Sebastian Velasquez getting into it. That's three shoves. Looked like it might come to fisticuffs. And now Jordan Stewart and Taylor P.A. starting to get into it a little bit. And this is just pure frustration on the end of the Monarchs. Phoenix should probably stay away from any sort of altercation because they have the game in the bag and a red card would certainly put a twist in the tail. 
Well, you look at Velasquez, who certainly seemed to lose his cool there. Do you change the substitution if you can? So he appears that Adams maybe it coming off, but is he going to go to video review? Not there available for this game, is it? But do you think he was looking at it? I don't think he's issuing a card at all. With three blatant shoves, that's kind of hard to believe. Amadou Dia claiming that Sebastian Velasquez was the instigator in all of this. Ismir Pekmich hasn't made a decision yet. He's going to ask for help from one of his assistant referees. And like you said, Mike, it's hard to believe that there isn't going to be any card issued to anybody. Yeah. Three blatant shoves is more than enough for a caution, I think, to be issued to at least Velasquez. I don't know if anything else was going, but after seeing the first one, we can see it here. The little headbutt, too. That actually should be a red card. Headbutt and that's, twice. And that's, two, and that's two shoves from Velasquez. Yeah. Dia really didn't do much. He probably yeah. should have walked away from it yeah. at the end of the day. But Velasquez led with his head as well. That should be a red card. Straight red. Uh, yeah, you can't lead with your head. You, you see that all the time, and uh, it doesn't appear that there's any card issued at all here. And there's more pushing and shoving going on now. And I wonder if it's Velasquez. It is. Velasquez involved in it again. And the bench now pulling over. Uh, this is, he's, he's not long for this one at this point. I, I'm amazed he didn't get a ca caution to start with at least. Should have probably been a red card, but says he's okay. But you know what, if I'm someone in red, I'm give him a little shove and just let's see how far he wants to take it. And this is really just a boiling point for Monarchs because they've been faltering for the past few weeks. It's another tough game on the road that they're probably going to drop all three points. Just a lot of frustration and now it appears yeah. that we are going to have Didier Drogba come onto the scene here at the next opportunity for a substitution to be made. Diego Calvo still needs to come on. Awako. Rigi. Sam Hamilton. Big ball over the top for Amadou Dia. Dia towards the byline, around the defender. Still Dia squaring it across, and Awako maybe overran his run to the near post, and it'll be a goal kick for Sparrow. Let's see, it doesn't appear they're going to get the. Yeah, they will get the substitution in now as Adams makes his way off. Charlie Adams coming off and looks like they're going to wait a little bit for Didier Drogba to come on. And there is Drogba. And Didier Drogba has not played since August 5th, the game in which he put in the outstanding free kick against LA Galaxy 2. He's been rehabbing his hamstring back in London with Chelsea and now coming out to the scene here in the 85th minute and replacing Amadou Dia and a big moment here at the Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. Didier Drogba will go for the next five minutes plus stoppage time. We'll see how he fares. Oh, and surprise, surprise. They move him up a little bit and Jason Johnson drops back into the midfield. Well, is Drogba going to play anywhere else but up top? <laughs> Yeah, not likely. Trugba already creating a turnover in the middle of the park, sliding it through, hoping for Jason Johnson. Caught the back of the Jamaican's heel as he was looking for his second goal of the night. And it's just amazing as any time he really touches the ball, something is going to happen, yeah. probably on the positive side. And it's not to say that that man has never given the ball away in his life, but Truly really a living, breathing legend. Big switch over to the other side. Wakasa out to defend. Alaska is trying to get to the byline. It's a good delivery, but Mala is there. And credit to the Phoenix back line. It hasn't all been the midfield who's been clogging up the holes. The back line has stood strong whenever the Monarchs have threatened. I 
And again, Jarma will want to be careful here. He does have those four yellow cards and on this season. His next one will result in a suspension unless he can get one rescinded, as you pointed out, for good behavior. But that's still going to be a course of time. This ball slipped through. Good opportunity for the Monarchs here. Hoffman trying to get around the big Kavon Lambert, but that is a tall, tall task. Ball squirts through. Awako taking it off the foot of Drogba. Gladson Awako, the Ghanaian, into a dangerous area, but will wisely put on the brakes. Drogba trying to curl it in behind. Johnson is onside, trying to bring it down. Jason Johnson denied by Sparrow. Still Johnson. Well, two individually superb efforts, both from Johnson and Sparrow, and Sparrow gets the better of him. Again, Phoenix dangerous on that opportunity, slotting balls through. Obviously, the situation's changed from what's been the rest of the game as Salt Lake has to push forward. However, that's been the story of the game, just continually taking those opportunities on the counter and, and try and find something in that final third. Comes out wide for Cruz. Helped along by Cody Wakasa. It's Awako again. Boy, has he been busy tonight. Drogba asking for it. He's got plenty of space in the middle of the park, but it goes out wide for Sam Hamilton. Rigi. Drogba spinning away from the one two. Two minutes left in the 90 plus stoppage time. Looks like Patrice Carteron's last substitution is going to be Matt Watson. As he's going to come on in a brief moment. Good challenge in the middle of the park, but it is going to be a foul. Kevon Lambert and Didier Drogba both with palms up in the air. Hamilton feeling like he got all ball, but we'll play on. The Monarchs the other way. Square back across. Velasquez denied by Cohen. Cruz back across. Cohen's number hasn't been called all that much tonight, but when it was, he certainly made a count. And we do have a player down on the far side. Maybe Owako. At every Phoenix Rising home match during the 2017 season, two lucky fans will be upgraded to sit in the best seats in the house Courtesy of Pruitt's Fine Furniture, these lucky winners will not only enjoy tonight's action in the most comfortable seats directly on the pitch, but those luxury reclining chairs will also be delivered to their home next week as a gift from Phoenix Rising FC and Pruitt's Fine Furniture. Not a bad way to watch a game. No, and it's nice to be able to keep those uh, leather chairs out in the desert, you know, outdoors, you know, you know. <laughs> Anywhere else around the country, you almost have to make sure you had the slip covers ready to go. But man, what a seat at the Phoenix Rising game as it is a Waco who is up and looks like he'll be the player coming off on the substitution anyway. And Gladson Awoko, who has been potent in Phoenix's attack, not only tonight, but since he's arrived on the scene a couple weeks ago, getting a nice round of applause from the fans here at the Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. And now the substitution is going to be made as it's Matt Watson coming on. And it is Alessandro Rigi who's going to come off. So Iwako will either have to sit the rest of the game if he's not able to continue or make his way back on. It looks like the Ghanaian will be okay to continue. But Matt Watson coming on and Alessandro Rigi, who as well put in a terrific shift tonight. It really has been a complete team effort from Phoenix in the dismantling of the Monarchs. Yeah, they really have, and uh, that's the thing. And again, people will look at it and go, oh, well, the possession, but really shots on goal. I think we, maybe we just saw one of the first ones throughout. We've only seen three shots maybe by Salt Lake in this entire half. So it's something that they haven't created. They haven't been able to translate that opportunity possession into, uh, into that uh, goal-scoring opportunities. That was a nice save by Cohen. Officially into stoppage time now. Wakasa just going to see this out of bounds. And we are.
they're going to have four minutes added on to the 90. Most of that probably for the pushing and shoving that occurred a few minutes ago between Sebastian Velasquez as well as Amadou Dia. And there's the caution to Cohen. Attention Phoenix Rising fans, it's time to celebrate a rich tradition with the Dia de los Muertos scratchers tickets from the Arizona Lottery. Play for a chance to win up to $10,000 instantly on three unique tickets designed by a local Arizona artist. Visit your favorite Arizona Lottery retailer to play. Plus, visit any Phoenix Rising home game from September 16th to October 14th, and you might find yourself in the Arizona Lottery Lucky Row giveaway, where anyone in the Lucky Row will receive a free Dia de los Muertos scratchers ticket. And Cohen, of course, long time coming, mm -hmm. yellow card for time wasting. Drogba, fending off two Monarchs defenders. Asking for a foul, but not going to get one. And that is a kick from Cruz. Surprised it's only a yellow, as Didier Drogba was just trying to help him back a couple yards and trying to take the throw in. But instead, Daniel Cruz loses his temper a bit, and it will be a yellow card to number 61. It's a good thing this game's not 95 minutes plus stoppage time. We'd probably see someone be tossed from it. Getting a little, uh, little chippy, a little out of control. Just about 30 seconds left in the four minutes added on. Monarch still looking for a breakthrough, maybe something to take back to Salt Lake City. That's a positive. Johnson free the other way. He's onside. Jason Johnson looking for number two. Still Johnson, Sparrow off of his line, Johnson! And it's just wide, it was a long run that started right around midfield. Just unable to put the finishing touches on it, Sparrow did well to cut off the angle. Yeah, you can see Johnson making the run in, but I think just as importantly here, even though he's over the top looking for that second one, this defense has been fantastic, Tyler. Five goals in nine matches since July 22nd, and a couple of those were on a penalty kick and when the team was playing short. But tonight they'll get yet another shutout as they get the win. Full time here from Phoenix. Phoenix rising, make it eight unbeaten. They take down the top dogs of the Western Conference. Jason Johnson provided the insurance goal. Sam Hamilton got his first goal this season and got us started in the 29th minute. And Phoenix rising FC continue their meteoric rise in the Western Conference standings. It's another huge result for the team out of Arizona. Mike Pepper, your thoughts? I think that Phoenix was outstanding tonight. They went with the game plan. They exactly followed that game plan how they wanted. They were going to counterattack. They were going to slot the ball through. They were able to get the goal early on from it, and they added on to it with a fantastic goal. It's going to make a lot of highlight reels in the second half. they got to be happy both with offense and defense tonight. The Monarchs now drop three in a row for the first time since the summer of 2016. And Phoenix Rising FC make it eight unbeaten. 2-0 is the final score from Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. We'll be back in just a few moments with post game. Stay with us. Trolls. Ah. <laughs> 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 this is Contour from Cox. Cable TV reimagined to get you right to the good stuff. La familia Heineken ha dejado un legado especial, una receta original con solo tres ingredientes y todos naturales. Yo también tengo un don especial. de llorar cuando se necesite. Bonita. Solo tres ingredientes naturales. There's more behind the star. El mundo está 
atento a Phoenix Rising Football Club, porque las leyendas internacionales Didier Drogba y Sean Wright Phillips juegan juntos para Phoenix y le dan a esta ciudad el fútbol de alta calidad que los fans esperan ver. Ve a Phoenix Rising Football Club enfrentar a Seattle Sounders Football Club 2 miércoles 20 de septiembre a las 7.30 pm en vivo en Your View, Arizona. Phoenix Rising Football Club, nuestra ciudad se levanta y el mundo está atento. Full time here at the Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex as the home side comes away with a 2-0 win over the first place Real Monarchs from Salt Lake City. And with the Phoenix Rising FC's win, you at home also win. For the next 24 hours, fans can purchase the best available seats for just 10 bucks. Just head to the club's Twitter and Facebook pages at Phoenix Rising FC to find the special link and buy your tickets for the next home match on October 4th against the Tulsa Roughnecks FC, which will certainly be a huge contest if Phoenix are nipping at the heels of Svantessen and the rest of Tulsa as Phoenix Rising FC with another huge result. Tyler Terrence along with Mike Pepper, Jason Johnson, and Sam Hamilton, the goal scorers for Phoenix. Monarchs struggle to defend them on set pieces. And we will take a look at some of the best moments from the highlights, but first we are going to check in with Jose Bosch. Thank you guys very much. We're here with midfielder Sam Hamilton because of the clean sheet, game-winning goal scorer. Can you tell me what happened on that play? Uh, just off a corner kick, ball got bounced around a little bit. Uh, Cody got a little touch to it, and then I was right there to finish it. Now, I know you haven't been with the team very long, but can you talk about what's the atmosphere like with the team and training, and why are you guys playing so well? I mean, we have a really good uh, attitude in the locker room. We've got great leadership from the older guys and just overall training every single day we bring it. We've been just trying to get better, really focused on, on our shape and attention to detail and I think that's what's ultimately led us to this winning streak that we've been on. Now nine matches, just five goals. You're part of the defense. What's it like to, to be in such a groove right now defensively? Oh, it's amazing, but at the same time, Coach stretches stresses humility and I think Right now, the group knows that we're nine games unbeaten, but at the same time, we got seven left, and we got to keep pushing to get that playoff spot and earn home home games in the playoffs. All right, and is this your first game-winning goal? Yeah. How's it feel? It feels great, man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. That's Sam Hamilton. Team wins tonight. 2-0. Back to you guys. Thank you, Jose, and a great game from that man, Sam Hamilton, providing his first ever Game winner certainly put in a solid shift in the middle of the park. And now, Mike Pepper, we will finally take yeah. a look at the full-time highlights. And right off the bat, a great opportunity for Phoenix. But Rigi probably made the wrong choice. Yeah, he really did. I mean, it was a mad, decent performance all the way around for Phoenix. But that was not a mad, decent choice as Rigi had the open man to his left. A two-on-nil break. Yet he still tries to go in the goal. And it was a good save there by Sparrow. But as one, they probably should have converted. And then this was the first goal of the game for Phoenix. Kevon Lambert denied by Sparrow, but Sam Hamilton there to tuck it away. Well, there you go. Rigi sends a good ball in, and it was just Phoenix all the way on top of the ball as Rigi came in. And we talked about that opportunity. First time Lambert and just punching it in. And that's what Hamilton is rewarded for, a game-winning goal. Phoenix wouldn't necessarily have most of the possession, but they would have plenty of opportunities on the counter. Chris Cortez wasn't really able to find the frame tonight, but he did other things to help his team in terms of holding up the ball. Yeah, the big body, you know, you send the ball up and strong, and sometimes when you do create those chances, though, you start to see the teams will console on them, or at least try to squash down that attack, and then you might have these other guys running off the ball, which would be a little bit better advantageous. Cortez would be unable to really calibrate with his shooting ability on the night, but this was the moment that would seal all three points for Phoenix Rising. Jason Johnson, his first touch of the evening is a golden one. Yeah, fantastic ball in for Wakasa, and it was just Johnson in there. As you say, first touch, boy, that's one of those dream ones. Six yards out, coming across, you see the ball, perfect height, and he did no mistake about that one to give the second goal. Johnson with his eighth goal off the season, this time coming off of the bench and providing a super sub-like mentality. And then Sebastian Velasquez, he certainly had his moments throughout the contest. He was really the only player who provided any sort of offense for this Monarch side. Yeah, great individual move there. Unfortunately, it was in the news a little bit later as the pushing and shoving, but, you know, did not get penalized for that. But what a move here by Velasquez and the ball across. Should have been better done by Hoffman. He's done it 14 times this year. Couldn't make it 15 on that one. Hoffman unable to find the back of the net as well as the whole Monarch side. And now a live look at the 
Western Conference standings. And you can see there, Phoenix with a huge three points, and they are now level with the Tulsa Roughnecks. And that game on October 4th should certainly be a big one as we head down the stretch. And Monarchs dropping points, San Antonio yeah. nipping at their heels as well. Sacramento getting the win tonight to move the, the Roughnecks down a little bit. Phoenix in that joy, but you notice that Phoenix still with a game in hand. They can jump both Tulsa and Sacramento and get themselves into a position of what they'll want because this is a great home field advantage here. And if they can close that gap so Swope Park, they may, just may, be hosting a first round game, but they have been in the right direction ever since August started. Well, Phoenix continue to make the most of the opportunity at hand, and that's the games in hand, as the players will now spend some time appreciating the fans and their support. Cody Wakasa, who was brilliant tonight, signing the T-shirt of some lucky fan, as plenty of fans here lining up to maybe just get a glimpse of the legend that is Didier Drogba, who made his first appearance since August the 5th. Well, it was an exciting football match that ended in a win for the home side. Phoenix Rising FC with a 2-0 victory over Real Monarchs SLC. And for my broadcast partner, Mike Pepper, I'm Tyler Terrence saying so long for now. The final score from Arizona, Phoenix 2, Monarchs nil. Thanks for joining us, folks. We'll talk to you soon. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the express written consent from the United Soccer League.